Monday on Home and Family, we talk with actor Justin Baldoni about his CW hit, Jane the Virgin. And from Silicon Valley, actress Suzanne Cryer tells us what to expect in the second season. That's Monday, right here on Home and Family. We're back in the kitchen with Deco. Would you stop it? Well, I'm excited because I get to eat. I've been sitting at the I, table. I get to eat. Yes. Yes. She's excited. You're, you're shoving me out. You know that. You keep, nope. um, you keep pushing me to the edge of the counter. Well, because I want to eat. I know. Okay, you're... but we're excited that Dan Kohler. Dan Kohler is back with us, everybody, and he's going to give us some incredibly helpful tips for kitchen swap outs. I yes. love this. I hope you do. You know, let's start. I'm going to feed you my mistake cake. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is what I like Any to call cake is all right awesome. with me. What, no I like call... You drop it on the floor or what? Thank you. Well, yeah. it's a mistake Thank cake you. because we've all had those moments of panic in the kitchen where you are halfway done making that cake batter and you realize, uh-oh, I don't have any baking powder. Or this yeah. calls for buttermilk, I only have whole milk. So this mistake cake is made with every one of the swap outs I'm going to walk you through today. These will save you in a pinch. Can I just say this is a beautiful cake. Yes, I hope it is. This is a really beautiful cake. Look at that. Okay. Enjoy. Let's start with cake it. flour. A lot of times you get, a, you get a pastry recipe and it's calling for cake flour. What is cake flour versus all-purpose flour? All-purpose flour has a 10 to 12% content of protein. Cake flour is actually a different breed of wheat. It's got a seven to eight percent protein content. So how do we mimic that? We don't want a lot of protein in our baked goods. So to get that, for every cup of all-purpose flour, you're gonna use, take out two tablespoons and use two tablespoons of cornstarch in its place. Cornstarch has a much lower protein content. We're gonna lower the protein content of that flour and all of a sudden you have a lighter baked good. Uh, this tastes okay. great, Dan, so I great. don't know. Really Look, good. mistakes can be delicious. Mistakes yeah, this can be is delicious. a good one. <laughs> Moving on. Brown, who knows what brown sugar is? Anyone here? Oh, sugar that's think. brown. <laughs> Christina. You asked. Sugar, you asked, asked Dan. Look, Christina. So, yeah. so brown sugar is actually just sugar, granulated sugar, and molasses. Oh. So for every... What, what? Yeah, right? You thought it was its own special thing that they I were did. harvesting. Yeah, no. Yeah. Here's the hack. Brown sugar, when you run out of it, if you've got sugar and you've got molasses and you've everyone... You've got brown sugar. You've got brown sugar. You've got... And, and everyone has a bottle of molasses. Don't tell me that yeah. you made gingerbread yeah. 16 years ago. Yeah, you still got a bottle of molasses in the cabin. Everyone has it somewhere. Yeah, my husband would have thrown that out. Anything that expires <laughs> a minute ago is gone. <laughs> Okay. Moving but molasses on. you can hang on to for a long time. You can. Yeah. You can. But regular granulated sugar? Regu look, look at this. Okay. Look at this. Yeah, who knew? Yeah. All you've got to do, yeah. cup of sugar. Mm -hmm. a blue blender. This is delicious. Is it? And I'm almost done. this is one teaspoon. I didn't want to drink it. This is like molasses. molasses. This isn't. This is blackstrap molasses. This is the real That's deal. It. This is crazy. I love it. All we got to do is pulse that together. This is what you do when you get brown sugar. Now, if you want dark versus light brown sugar, you're going to use a higher ratio of molasses. Wow. That's all it is. Are we there? Molasses? Look at this. Look at I that. am Are you kidding blown me? away. So moving on, powdered sugar. Yeah. Anyone know what powdered sugar is? Yes. Go for it. It's sugar that's powdered. <laughs> I gotta stop asking questions. This blue, this blue panel. This blue panel. Yeah, this is a, it's a blue ah, panel. Powdered sugar is granulated sugar that's been pulverized with cornstarch. So to mimic that, get out your spice grinder, throw in a cup of granulated sugar and one teaspoon of cornstarch. I'm using a spice grinder here instead of the food processor. Why? Because the lower volume. The smaller volume of the container means there's a higher, higher uh, point of contact between the sugar grains and the blades. So the blades are hitting the sugar more often, which means we're pulverizing it more than it would in this vacuous container. Oh. Hmm. So this is going to mimic powdered sugar. Look at that. We got that? Stop you just it. made that. Wow. You just made powdered sugar. I feel so foolish. Yeah, I do too. I come by the chat, though, because you know everything. Yeah, but yeah, no, I know. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, you do. Yeah. I, do. I, I knew that. Really good yeah, please. Can you actually make these and then store them like you would other brown sugars or granulated sugar? You sure can. I, I, I don't think it's necessary to. This is these are the things that I use when I'm in a pinch. You know, sometimes I don't buy brown, brown sugar because I know, you know what, I've got sugar and molasses at home, so I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I do. So I don't I make see. it ahead of time. I just okay. I just know what's in my pantry. I'm going to use that instead. Okay. Moving on. Buttermilk, buttermilk pancakes. Who has no. buttermilk on hand? Almost no. nobody, no right? One. I know it's made of. <laughs> Great. What is it? Well, butter and milk. Buttermilk. No. Mark. Yeah. Mark. Wrong yet again. Uh, oh. Buttermilk <laughs> is in fact the milk that's left over from churning butter. So when we churn butter, we've got a byproduct, and that byproduct is more acidic and it's thicker. To mimic that, we're going to take a teaspoon of vinegar and add it to a cup of whole milk. Anyone remember what happened when I made cheese here? On the coagulated. Stove. Yes. Yeah. We started to unravel those proteins yeah, right. yeah. with heat and with acid. So this mimics that, but without the heat, it's going to go a little slower. So we're going to let this sit for five minutes. The milk's going to clabber, which means those proteins unfold. They start to curdle a little bit. Then you've got buttermilk. It's acidic and it's thick. 
Mm. Do I get a science degree for attending? You do. Oh, yeah, you, you get do. a certificate. Yeah. Yeah. I saw what happened over here. I like this. Switching but plates. Now, <laughs> a tablespoon <laughs> of white wine vinegar. White, no, vinegar. white, white vinegar. Or lemon juice. And, we'll do that with and, Or lemon milk. juice yeah. and a cup of milk. Whole milk? Yeah. You can do any, but I prefer okay. whole milk. I, okay. Mm. Now, I love that. leavening agents are really the most important. The what? most common chemical that we use to leaven things in the kitchen is sodium bicarbonate, which is? Baking soda. Baking soda. Great. Anyone know what baking powder is? You know what the difference is? Not really. So baking powder is actually baking soda plus cream of tartar, which is tartaric acid. Now, baking soda, we all know. We've got that here. I never here. knew what cream of tartar was. <laughs> I didn't I know. No. I thought it was made up. Okay. So, so baking soda, we all know the, the grade school experiment. It reacts to vinegar to release carbon dioxide, right? That gives us lift. Now, baking soda is used in recipes where you don't have a high acid content. So to mimic that, we have baking powder and cream of tartar because cream of tartar is an acid that is water soluble. So all of a sudden, I'm not adding vinegar, I'm adding water this time, and we're also going to get the release of carbon dioxide. Okay. Look at you. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Wow. wow. Okay. Moving on, because we're gonna go through all the ingredients in this cake. Seriously. Okay. When you need to when you need to substitute an egg, there's lots of lots of ways to do that. This time I've used a banana instead. There's no egg in there. Banana because banana is protein, fat, and water, which we've got in an egg, and it gives it body, <laughs> body and structure. Yep. When you run out of vanilla, Raid your liquor cabinet, bourbon, whiskey. Those have a lot of the same flavor profiles as did vanilla. That. I know that, Mark. Yeah. No, I have did. nothing left. <laughs> and suddenly you have mistake cake. This is no egg in really. here. No, no egg in there. Really? Banana. It's just a banana. You are awesome. Uh, no <laughs> butter. <laughs> Sorry, butter? No, buttermilk. Fake buttermilk. buttermilk. Mistake this buttermilk. This is delicious. So is it fewer <laughs> calories? Well, I'm yeah. not going to go into that. Well, seems like it would be. <laughs> it does. Irrelevant anyway. Guess you just need to make sure you have cornstarch in your kitchen. Yeah, cornstarch right? saves <laughs> cornstarch <laughs> saves a lot of Everything. things. We're going to put so much of all of this stuff, our helpful kitchen swap outs on our website oh, well. as well. I know, Lisa, you have to take off, right? I've been told. Well, you're if you have other mistakes, I, you know. <laughs> well, then you can hang so around. Fantastic. We have plenty of those mistakes around here, trust me. Uh, all right, when we come back, though, we have former fashion model Renee Area, and she is here sharing her inspirational story about overcoming a paralyzing brain tumor. It's next.